to my channel. So today's setup and today's video is a little bit different. Uh, we will see if this footage actually makes the light of day, but I thought that I would take you along on some of my cooking adventures. So I still have this idea that I'm going to film the entire process of my batch cooking, which is what I do like every Saturday or Sunday during the school year, just to have enough food for the week so that I, you know, make sure I eat enough vegetables and I eat things that are healthy and good for me and all of that, but that I don't spend, you know, hours every day cooking. However, I'm currently on vacation and that is going to be the time of the year, aside from the summer obviously, that I actually like play around and cook things that I normally wouldn't cook just because they don't batch cook well. So today actually turns out to be a good day because I am running out of kimchi and I also want to make something different, something I normally wouldn't make for lunch. So, so let me, let me show you. So this is the last of my homemade kimchi. When I made it last time, I had two liter jars like this, basically full up to about here. I didn't fill them completely up just because if there's any sort of like gas coming out or whatever, I didn't want them to accidentally explode or overflow in my fridge. So it actually worked really well. And the recipe that I used this time, so I've been making my own kimchi for a while. I will sometimes buy kimchi. So for example, I actually, when I went to the store today, I bought a bag of kimchi just because this recipe takes like two or three days for it to start fermenting. And so I can't eat it for those first two or three days and I wanted to have some kimchi for the next couple of days. So other than that, I do try and make my own kimchi now just because one, I know exactly what is gonna go into it. Two, it's a lot cheaper. So to give you an idea, this bag of kimchi, which is not very much, I think it's 500 grams of kimchi, is like six euros, I think. I can't remember, it depends on the store I go to. I have two stores that I can get kimchi from here in town and the one I like to go to because it's a little bit of a smaller store and the woman is really nice. Um, I've tried going and the last two times it's been closed so I just didn't risk it today because I had other groceries and I knew that my other store, the bigger one, was gonna be open. But at the bigger store, it is more expensive. So it's between like five and seven euros depending on where I go. So I really try and avoid buying it as much as possible. You know it gets expensive so i do have some just to kind of hold me over until i finish up my next um, batch but i think that whatever i cook today i'm going to use up the last of my homemade stuff and then this will be over the next like two or three days while i'm waiting for the new batch to ferment so the recipe that i use and i think as i mentioned i've been making kimchi for a while i originally was using a recipe like a random recipe i found online and it, it was not good um i think it was like just a random cooking site recipe and like shame on me I should have known better but the problem that I had when I first started making kimchi is that it was really hard for me to source certain ingredients and on top of that I have celiac and so I have to be really careful that everything that I put in is actually gluten-free so I you know after a couple of months of making kimchi I finally splurged and I got Ming Chi's cookbook because I needed a real Korean cookbook. I cook enough Korean food and I want to know how to do it kind of right, if you will. I mean, that's not to say that I follow recipes all the time because let's face it, I don't. For kimchi, I do just because it's fermented and I don't want to accidentally give myself some sort of not fun stomach bug or whatever. Um, so the recipe that I use in here is, let's see if I can find it. Oh. There's literally a bookmark. The recipe I use is the bite-sized Napa cabbage kimchi, so mac kimchi, and it's on page 120 if you do have Mang Chi's Big Book of Korean Cooking, and I love this recipe. Like, obviously Mang Chi is amazing, and we love her, but this one came out so, so well my first time, so it's really good. The only thing is, it is, like, there's kind of a lot of ingredients, like, if you can see over here, there's kind of a lot of ingredients, so um, the nice thing is, because I live alone, when I make up one head of cabbage, it makes, like, two jars of kimchi, and it lasts me for a while, and I think as I get better at making it, it'll go a little bit faster, so that is good. So, I need a place for my book. What I thought I would do is kind of start preparing the kimchi and chat with you guys a little bit about cooking gluten-free Korean food in France. 
a little bit. Um, obviously, I am not the person that you should come to for actual recipes because there exists like tons and tons of really great resources. I'm using a really great resource to make things myself. However, there are certain things that I do have to adapt just because I can't eat everything and I live in a country where not, and I don't live in Paris, so that also changes things. If I were to live in Paris, I would probably have ready access to most, if not all, of the ingredients that I need. So I thought I would kind of chat about how I sort of make do and make adjustments and alterations and adaptations to recipes so that I can work with the ingredients that I actually have and so I can actually eat it. So if any of you are gluten-free and are interested in learning to cook some Korean food, like maybe this will be interesting. So let's grab our cabbage. So we've got our cabbage and I don't like that it comes in this plastic wrap. This is the first time I've seen it like this, but I was at the store and I was already carrying a lot of things and so I didn't want to go back. So I buy just one head of cabbage and what we are gonna have to do, because I also don't have a very large kitchen, I don't know if you can tell, but basically I can touch my fridge. Like if I'm up against my counter, I can touch my fridge right here. And I have a two thirds size fridge, which is bigger than some of the fridges in France. So we're gonna do, actually no, I think this one's bigger. Here, we're gonna do my big bowl here. So, we're going to start preparing the cabbage because I have to let that sit for two hours. I literally just got back from the store and as I was at the store, I was like, I think I'm going to film this video. So as you can see, we have not planned ahead, which, you know, it's pretty par for the course. So let me just take a look at, I need to cut. I also have to go and find my salt, so. Don't mind me, just sharpening my knife. So I am going to cut the butt off. So we'll see how this goes. So basically I just cut off the little butt and as you can see, I actually, I have this weird thing that I do. I like to have a tea towel under my cutting board when I do a lot of cooking because as I like wash vegetables and stuff, I just put it on here and that way if it's not fully drained, I don't get like just a puddle of water. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of the way that I go. So. These actually, because I bought it today and I got one that looked really, really nice, I actually don't even think, I might cut off like this part. There's like a little bit there that I don't really want. Mm, and a little bit over here. But these leaves actually are looking really good. Sometimes when I get a cabbage, I will have to cut off and sacrifice a couple of the outer leaves, but this one actually looks okay. So, and also I am going to try my best. Uh, I'm gonna show you kind of the process, but not all of it, just because you should definitely support Mangchi because she's awesome. Um, but I thought that the kind of confluence of gluten-free plus France plus Korean food would be interesting enough to make a video. However, you know, I don't want to like replace the hard work that Mangchi has done. So you should definitely, definitely check out her her YouTube channel, her website, like all of that, if you're interested in making this recipe or her book. Um, so I'm not gonna like put all of the steps in as we go. So just FYI. All right, so we've got this. Then what I have to do is, I should have done half and then dealt with it. Um, I'm supposed to cut out the ribs, I think. Oh yeah, I should have done it before I cut. Oh well, actually this is a really baby one. There's like not even that much rib action, if you will. So I'm just gonna cut out the tiniest little bit and we're just gonna go ahead and cut this. So one of the reasons that I always make this um, mutt kimchi is because I do not have the space in my small French apartment to want to have gigantic tubs, like the gigantic tubs that would be necessary to do a full batch of kimchi. Also, um, since I only want to do like one head of cabbage at a time, because I also don't have the room to store it or that many people to eat it, um, I find that it's just easier for me to do this particular, whoops, excuse you, this particular style of kimchi. So that is kind of the rationale um, for why I do this one. It is just much more easy to manage in a small apartment, I find, and it makes a really like reasonable quantity for me. Which, I mean, I, when I do eat kimchi, which I kind of go through waves of it recently, I haven't been eating that much because I was kind of saving the end of my batch, but when I do eat it, I eat a lot of kimchi, so like, 
it's it's definitely worth it for me to make my own, but I also have to be really like cognizant about space. So there we go. And the nice thing about this is this particular recipe, she has actually sized to do one head of cabbage um, as opposed to, I think her whole cabbage kimchi is at least two, I wanna say. I actually didn't even look at it just because I knew I wasn't gonna be making that much. Um, there we go. I like this, there's actually not that much like cabbage waste because this was kind of a smaller like young cabbage and so it didn't get as like stocky on the inside. So here, there, oops. Okay, making a mess. There we go. So I have my big bowl of cabbage right now. And so now I have to go and find, whoops, sorry. So you guys are fine. These are my little stalks. You guys are fine. To go and find my salt. Okay, so I just used this like Mediterranean big salt, like coarse salt, I think is technically what it is. And I just keep that on hand for when I make kimchi and other pickled things. So I need six tablespoons of salt. Here. I literally, I have a ring for my, my measuring spoons, but I actually leave the tablespoon out because it's the one I use the most. And I basically don't measure a lot of things, but I do like to do for the kimchi. So I'm supposed to do six tablespoons. This is entirely too big. Uh, me, it's fine. We'll make it work. Three, four, five, and six. There. And actually I'm gonna just like, oh dear. It's also kind of, when, because I have my little um, tea towel under here, it's actually a little bit easier to manage and I need to clean up at the end. So this is going to be, and as you can see, like, by rights, I should have a much larger bowl, or I should have split it in two, but one, I don't have a larger bowl. This is my biggest one. And two, I am for sure of the, like, make it work so as not to do more dishes kind of <laughs> school of thought. <laughs> Actually, I do have a really large, like, pot that I could have used, but meh, too late now. Okay, so, got that. Now I need, oh my gosh, I need water. And let's see, one cup. So one cup of water, there. So now I'm gonna set this here and I need my phone. So I have to set a two hour timer. So I actually use this app called Multi-Timer and I love it because I can set like six different timers and I can label them. So I'm actually going to do I have some that I just like change. So this one I originally had labeled as a slow cooker timer, but I'm actually gonna change it to cabbage. And so now I just have a little two hour cabbage timer and let that go. So while my cabbage is going, um, I wanted to show you a couple of things that I get when I go to the Asian market that's nearby. So I have, as I mentioned before, I have two different markets that I go to and there might be a few others like in other parts of town, but these two are like within really close walking distance of my house. So what I do is I actually have, I need to make some rice today. So I pulled this out. So I keep my rice in a big jar like this because when I buy rice, so when I buy rice, I buy, a five kilo bag. This one's actually only four and a half, um, but that is because I wanted to get, this is like a medium grain. I often what I'll do is I will buy some combination of broken rice or jasmine or fragrant rice, kind of whatever I can see. Because I eat so much rice, I basically kind of look for whatever the cheapest five kilo bag is. However, I really wanted to try one that's more of a traditional Korean style rice. And so this was kind of the closest thing that I could find that it was in a big enough bag. So basically um, the woman at the store, she showed me a couple, they were all like one kilo bags. And so this was like, 
like the closest that I could kind of go with. So, obviously, this one is not going to get opened up yet. Oh dear, that's going to fall. That's cool. Um, because I still have to finish this one. So, this is actually probably Thai rice, I want to say. There's one particular, I don't have the bag anymore. I just um, emptied it out a couple days ago. But I, I like this particular one. It works really well in... The, the rice cooker and all of that. So that is one of the other things that I did. I eat a lot of rice, as I mentioned, I buy five kilo bags of rice. And so at some point I was like, if I'm eating this much, ri much rice, I'm getting a rice cooker. So I just have a really simple one. And we're actually gonna start cooking rice while we're waiting for the cabbage because I have no rice in my fridge. So I am probably um, breaking all sorts of rice laws because I will make up rice and then while it's hot, I will put it into a jar. I know, don't come at me. Honestly, like this is batch cooking life. Like this is what I gotta do. So what I do, I have a really cute little baby rice cooker, very simple. Um, and I saw different ones that have like, they're more fancy, they're a little bigger. And one thing I liked about this one is I live alone. So like this makes three cups of rice easily. It's got a pretty small profile cause some of them get like really big and it works really well. So what I do is the rice cooker, literally the rice measuring and the little rice paddles live inside the rice cooker while I am not using it. And I actually have two plugs against like the bar, like basically my camera is set up looking over the bar and I have plugs there, which was fantastic of whoever did this particular renovation. Cause I think they basically took this and they like added a kitchen after the fact. And it's actually pretty well thought out overall. So I'm very pleased about that, which is great because obviously I actually cook a lot. So long story short, we are going to, and again, I also don't rinse my rice. Don't come at me. This is, I, as I mentioned, I'm of a particular school of thought. I don't use more dishes than I need to. I will use the dishes I need, but not anymore. I also go for things that are easy that come out and taste well. So I am not super fussy about my rice. I know that there's probably someone out here is going to be like completely offended by how I do my rice. Meh. Doesn't bother me. So I do three of these. Up. Okay. And I probably have enough for at least like two or three more cups of rice. So I'll put that away. And then I do not use the finger method. I use the cup method. So for three cups of rice, I do four and a half, four and a half of these of water. So one. Two, three, four, and a half. So I will give it a stir. And I do use, I use a Brita because the water in my town is particularly heavy in calcium and it really gunks up your um, utensils and like pots and stuff. So I do use filtered water. So. I'm sure if I were to do this right, I would rinse this and all of that, but like, meh. So, there, let's see. And we start. So, I'm just gonna stick this kind of back here. That will run. All right, so I've got kind of a chaotic situation. While our rice is cooking, I am going to talk to you about one of the other big things. So whenever possible, I do actually buy certain ingredients that I can. However, when it comes to sauces, most of the time there's something in the sauce that I can't actually eat. So one of the things that's really common in Korean cooking and I really, really enjoy is gochujang, which is like a spicy, um, like chili paste kind of thing. And unfortunately there are gluten-free versions of this that I have seen. Like when I went to H Mart in the U S um, when I was visiting my parents, they actually do have several brands that have, that are marked gluten-free. All the ones that I find in France have wheat flour in them in some way, shape, or form. So I make my own. So what I do is I get this. 
So this is um, goju jaru, so it's just like the um, uh, red pepper powder, which unfortunately I can only ever find the coarse version and I think I should be using the fine version. But like I said, I kind of adapt with what I can find. And I found this really good recipe online and I say really good, I've actually never had real gochujang because obviously I can't eat it most of the time. And I started learning how to cook Korean food when I was in France, so I've actually just never been able to buy it. So based on like pictures I've seen and what I think it should taste like, I think it comes out pretty well. So I found a recipe online. I have no idea where I found it from. If I remember, I will try and link it down below. So in case you are also gluten-free and wanna try it out, you can. But basically you use the red pepper flakes and it has a base of miso instead of something else. Again, I, I, I know you can make it yourself, but this was the like gluten-free version that I found and it's really easy. I have easy access to miso, so I just make that. So I frequently will buy white miso. Last time I made it, I actually had red miso because I was making a different recipe and I needed that for it. And because a lot of times I can't find the Korean versions of the soybean paste and so I basically have to get the Japanese versions. And also sometimes the Korean versions aren't gluten-free. So like if I can find them, sometimes they're not gluten-free and sometimes I just can't find them. So it's it's a whole thing. Um, but this time I actually got the dashi type. I was like, we'll try it, see how it goes. It's a little darker. And I did the red type last time and it like the paste came out looking more like it was supposed to, I think, because mine was always a little bit like pale looking, probably because I used white miso. So this one's kind of in between the two. So I figured we'll try it because the, the flavor of the red one is like not quite, it's a little sweeter than I want. So I figured I would try this one. So this is one of those things that um, I actually needed more of my uh, red pepper flakes because I finished them up the last time I made miso and as you can see like they, they last me a good long while but at some point I run out so I'm gonna need this for my kimchi and while I was there I was like oh I'm out of miso I should do that for the next time I need to make gochujang some of the other things I love I also love rice cakes and I'm really lucky because this particular brand of rice cakes are gluten free. And so I think what I'm going to do probably today is I'm going to make some kind of a kimchi stew. And I think what I'm going to do is air fry rice cakes and hot dogs, which is a street food. Now, technically you're supposed to serve it with a sauce and I actually had this when I was in Korea and the guy was really nice and he just gave it to me before he put the sauce on because I couldn't eat the sauce. Um, so I actually low-key love them just plain. It's a weird adaptation I have. Like I'm, I'm used to eating sushi without soy sauce. Like it's, it's a whole thing. So I think I'm going to make the um, basically hot dog, I think is what it's called. So hot dogs and rice cakes in the air fryer because I don't know if you guys can see this is my air fryer up here. I don't use it up there, um, but that's where I store it. But I used it last night and so before I go ahead and clean it, because I just did french fries, um, before I go ahead and clean it, I will use it one more time and then I'll clean it after I do all my cleaning uh, post cooking today. And I'm also going to do a kimchi stew. So I think what we're gonna do is, first off, I have, Oh my gosh, I made this, which actually, this is another recipe I used from the cookbook. Um, this is a kelp, uh, kelp stock, kombu stock, I think. And I made a bunch of it, and unfortunately, I only have ridiculously sized Tupperware that I don't use on a daily basis, so I had to freeze a bunch of it, which is kind of problematic. And as you can see, it is just like a mass. So what I need to figure out is, is there any way I can safely break off some to use? I feel like no. Yeah, that's definitely not safe. Uh, how are we gonna do this? Will you fit in the microwave? I don't know. <laughs> and this is ludicrous. This is not ideal. keep an eye. I just needed to defrost a little bit so that I can actually like break it out. Obviously I did not think ahead otherwise I would have taken it out last night and let it defrost but oops. So I actually have a ton of stuff over here so I actually need to pull out one pull out ingredients for kimchi two pull out ingredients for lunch. So let's take a peek. So I need rice flour, sugar, fish sauce, and garlic. Oh, nerds. I'm gonna have to buy another clove of garlic. Let me grab my grocery list. So I just added, obviously not a clove of garlic, a head of garlic. 
um, because basically I also have the stuff that I need for uh, Christmas dinner, which I am doing a sort of French style-ish. We're doing, um, a friend of mine is coming over, just the two of us, because neither of us can go home to our families, and we basically see zero people outside of work, so we're going to have our little mini Christmas by ourselves. So basically we're going to do confit de canard with uh, Roasted garlic mascarpone mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts with shallots and probably bacon unless I decide not to do that. Um, and then we actually also, I found a gluten-free bouche de Noël, which, let me show you. So this is my gluten-free bouche. It is chocolate, vanilla, and caramel. And, oh my gosh. Um, Funny story, my family actually makes bouche de noix sometimes. Um, they haven't made it in a while. My mom has made one or two gluten-free since I was diagnosed, um, but we don't make it all the time just because it's very labor intensive, but ours are the specific, like it's the rolled cake with the filling and like it looks like a log, it's iced like a log. So I've actually never had this style of bouche, so I saw it and was like, we have to try that, like obviously. Um, so basically, I have a lot of stuff right now in my kitchen because I have started collecting ingredients for like Christmas dinner. We're also planning on doing some sort of um, probably like arepas. I think we're going to do the yuca fries and that kind of stuff. Like as you can see, I, I kind of just eat weird stuff all over the times, but it does mean that when I want to make those things, I have to kind of get a lot of those ingredients. So typically the only things I have on hand are like all the time are stuff for batch cooking and then stuff to make Korean food because I always make some kind of combination of that. So anyway, uh, it's kind of chaotic right now. So. Um, I do not need the miso. I also got tuna because I've been watching this uh, Korean vlogger and she made this thing with tuna that I was like, I kind of want to try that. So I picked up some tuna. Oops, let me move that out of the way. What else do I need? So this is my rice flour. I don't actually have glutinous rice flour anymore, but it says you can use all-purpose flour and this is basically my version of all-purpose flour. Uh, garlic. Oh, there you go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Onion down, one sec. Save my onion, hopefully it's not too bruised. I'm gonna hopefully cook it up in the next day. Ginger, ooh, do I still have ginger? Oh my gosh, this is the problem. I fully just went to the store without, yes I do, haha. -ha. I fully just went to the store without actually looking at the recipe, so we're gonna find out if I have everything. Oh well, I'm actually gonna use at least half this onion. So hot pepper flakes we have. I have radish, which I'm actually not gonna pull that out yet. I do have Asian chives. Oh wait, it calls for chives and scallions. Well, I have two different kinds, so we'll see what we have. And then I don't do oysters, those are optional anyway. Fish sauce, oh cool. So I think, oh dear. This will be enough that I can at least take some out for my soup. This is all, wait. I want to do this for my soup. Yeah, why not? Okay, I actually need a normal size knife, not the giant knife. I only use the giant knife for the cabbage. So about halfway through of the cabbage wilting, I will mix it up. Because once it starts wilting down more, then I can actually get to it. So we are going to do my version of kimchi stew, which is really easy. Kimchi, obviously. So I'm going to do... Some tofu, got some wakame, got some green onions, and I've got some enoki mushrooms, which, like I said, I don't really follow recipes most of the time. So, we're gonna start, hold on, let's do this over the sink. So, the way that I like to do my tofu is I like to drain it and then squeeze out some of the water, which, <laughs> I just broke it in half, it's cool. All right, we're gonna let that kind of sit there for a minute. First step is, I like to stir fry my kimchi a little bit, which, uh, let's get oil. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil. I'm gonna do a little bit of bacon. So this is the weird bacon I get in France. So we are gonna use this one, and we're just then going to plop it over because this towel is gonna get cleaned 
as soon as I finish cooking today. So there's that. So we are starting to heat up the bacon. I'm gonna fry the bacon, then the kimchi, and then I'm gonna put in the other stuff. Oh, I have mushrooms. Oh wait, I have no, I have the fresh mushrooms. I also have some dried mushrooms, um, but I, was at the store today and I saw these and I figured I will get them and eat them up immediately while they are still nice and fresh. So, uh, I need to put the bacon back in the fridge. Okay, that's fine. So, I just like cut the butts off of these. Like there? Yeah, okay, so cut the butts off. So, I am going to somehow open, oh, interesting. This is just like coming off completely cool. Uh, Oh my gosh, how do you open? Oh, it's a weird. Okay. As you can see, I've never actually used this. Am I supposed to keep it in the fridge? Oh my gosh, refrigerate after open and consume within 30 days? Holy crap. Well, we are gonna find out. So, got there. So we're gonna do some of this shrimp paste, cause why not? <laughs> I don't know, I'm making this up. So one of the fun things that I can find here is I actually can get a liter of gluten-free soy sauce and this lasts me for a really long time. So one of the better finds that I have found. So mm, I feel like I don't actually want to eat all of these right now. Maybe I'll have half for dinner. So we're gonna just take half. I don't actually know the right way to store these, but I'm gonna stick it in the fridge like this. This is gonna go in kind of at the end. I think what I'm gonna do is grab a bowl. I'm gonna stick the enoki in here, just so we can get it out of the way. There. Then we are gonna do this one. I think he's a little smaller. Okay, I need a Tupperware. Oh dear. So that will get saved in the fridge. Oops, for another meal or two. So got my bacon in the bottom here. And So what I like to do is I take a spoon and I get the kimchi out without the liquid and then I put the liquid in after. So. Okay, so let that fry up and what we are gonna somehow do is get some of this stock. Get all our good kimchi sauce. So this is my tofu. So I'm actually about to deal with the rice. So so here is where you should avert your eyes if you are very particular about rice. I do turn it off, unplug somehow, and I do give it a little stir. But then I put it in my jar. but I eat a lot of rice and I do not have the time or the energy to make it every single day and so this is the way it goes. So we have there. So three cups of rice gets me almost two full Tupperware fulls of rice, which lasts me about five days, so more or less a week. Um, there's usually kind of the end of the week where I sub like substitute with other starches because I've run out of rice. And I don't feel like making it again. 
here is the rice. So I let those cool before I put them in the fridge, but I do not let them cool before I put them in the jars. Check on our soup. That is going to go nicely. So time for empty water. There. So the rest of this stock I'm gonna let defrost and I will use it this week. There. That's good for one person. Okay, so after I do my kimchi and the water, then I do a little bit of mirin. I have never done this, but we're gonna try it. I'm gonna do a little bit of shrimp paste. So I don't know actually how much paste to do. Um, hopefully this is good. Yeah. I am going to do the tofu closer to the end, but we are gonna prepare the next little bit. So, we need, oh, we need a tupperware for this. I just keep random little jars. So this is just wakame. Oh, and I was out, I finished up my wakame actually like two nights ago. Um, and so I bought some more while I was at the store. Okay, so that is our wakame. And I do not actually soak it, I just throw it directly into my soup. Let me just do a little bit, because this stuff goes up like crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice my, actually I'm gonna do it like this. Okay, so that is tofu. Shoop. And I'm gonna do some spring onions. So So, we'll do the green onion tofu and anoki kind of at the end. I'm not doing any soy sauce right yet just because I have no idea how salty the shrimp paste is. So while that is cooking, and I typically cook my kimchi stew for like 10, 15 minutes, give or take, we are going to prepare the hot dog. So, and I've probably misremembered the name because it's been a minute since I looked it up. Um, but the hot dogs and rice cakes. Actually, we are going to clean up a couple of things because I have no room left to work. So, this is very simple. First off, we need to preheat the air fryer. So, Pam is not a thing here, so I got a little mister that I put olive oil in and works like a charm. This is honestly, I have a really hard time finding hot dogs that are gluten-free. Um, some of them just are not. And it's one of those things that I basically only buy to do this particular dish because I'm kind of obsessed with it. So basically, I just get pork hot dogs and unfortunately I could only find a gigantic package of them, but I have my friend coming over later this week so I feel like we will end up, they, they won't go to waste. Typically you're supposed to do it on a skewer, but I don't. Um, so the way that I do mine is I actually cut my hot dogs in about thirds. And what I'm gonna do is do roughly the same number of rice cakes. Now I have done this where I do, I pre-boil the rice cakes um, before I actually put them in the air fryer and I don't really notice a difference. So I actually am super lazy and I just put them in as is but it's just easier for me to do it like loose basically in the air fryer. So what I typically will do is, and actually, you know what, we're gonna do it the kind of real way. So this is one exception to me not wanting to make bowls because I will sometimes do this. So I actually will toss it with a little bit of oil. So we have to let the air fryer pre preheat for about five minutes. So I think I'm actually gonna put my onions in, at least most of them. Let's see if we can fit all the hot dogs in here. Yeah, 
that'll work. Okay. While we wait for the air fryer, let's take a look. So I've got my stew going over here, and I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and throw in the tofu. So I eat enough Korean food that I actually got uh, Korean style spoons and chopsticks when I was in the US like two years ago, I think. And so yeah, these are actually actually my favorite. I honestly use these spoons to eat with like all of the time and then I'll just use chopsticks when I have chopstick food. So let's do, actually I'm gonna turn this back up a little bit. I feel like I actually am gonna have too many mushrooms. We're gonna switch it and we're gonna do the smaller batch. It's a little better and we're gonna take off a couple of these. This is, I tend to like to jam a bunch of vegetables in stuff and sometimes it just gets a little bit ridiculous and I can't actually like fit it all. So we'll just have something that's more mushroom heavy tonight. All right, please go in. And this is going, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and do you guys. Also need to get a sesame oil and sesame seeds for serving. So I think that air fryer is roughly done. So basically, because I'm lazy, I'm not even gonna set it down. I'm just going to spray a little bit of oil, drop in, give them a shake, and then I set a timer for five minutes. These ones actually go really fast. Let's do the stir. Definitely don't need soy sauce though. So while we wait for that to finish cooking, I am going to just kind of mix this a little better. I can tell it's definitely starting to wilt and I'm getting more liquid at the bottom. Let's do one more little flip. at guesstimating how much it takes to fill this particular soup bowl. And I must say that um, I'm pretty good at it. So to finish this, I just do a drizzle of sesame oil and a scoop of sesame seeds. Ta-da! I've got about 20 seconds left, so let's take a look. So they look pretty good. I think I'm gonna do it on for another like two minutes. Okay, so let's take this to the table. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pause filming and go have lunch and hopefully I will try and put a picture up in here of the finished meal. So I will come back after lunch and we will work on putting the kimchi together. So this is about two, two and a half hours of soaking my cabbage. I took a nice long break while I had my lunch and I did a bunch of dishes so that I had some more space to work. And I forgot one step, so I've actually got it cooling right now. So I had to do this mixture and it needs to cool fully before we can, um, before we can do the next part. But what I can do in the meantime is rinse my cabbage and chop up my vegetables. So I'm actually working on vegetables. Just a follow up on lunch, I, because I never use a recipe, or very rarely, um, whoopsie, that 
kind of went everywhere. Um, because I rarely use a recipe specifically for things like kimchi stew, I kind of just make it a little bit differently each time. Sometimes come out better than others. And this was one that it was good, but I definitely think I'm going to remember to not do the fish sauce. I don't care for the fish sauce. Oh gosh, I'm making a huge mess. I don't care for the fish sauce in um, kimchi stew the way that I make it. So I think I would like it in a different kind of soup, but not in, not in that one. So just kind of one of those random things to keep in mind and you know, you win some, you lose some. So, oh my gosh, my garlic got a couple of middle bits that are not looking so hot. So I'm having to kind of peel those out. Like I, if they don't look too bad, I leave them, but sometimes I would rather just get them out. So I need to mix up some stuff in the food processor, which mine is a little kind of mini one. And it's actually really cool because it doesn't have a motor on its own, it's just the bowl, but I can hook it up to an immersion blender and it works really well. So unfortunately, I cannot actually deal with this until that mixture I showed you is cool, but what I'm gonna do is at least set it up so that I've got it just ready to go. So fish sauce, so it's just waiting on that mixture. So I'm just gonna move this kind of over here. What we're gonna do now is rinse the cabbage, so I'm actually gonna go do that at the sink. So I've got my cabbage ready to go. So I'm just gonna finish up the prep work for everything. So I need my goju jaru. So I actually have, I use this as my like water one, and I have these from the US that have cut markings, which you guys might notice my cookbook is in English. So I, I learned how to cook in English specifically using the measurements that we have in the US. And it's kind of a pain in the butt to do all the conversions. So I will for certain things, but I very intentionally got this cookbook. I made sure I had an English version. And so all of my measurements are in like cups and tablespoons, which is what I am most used to. So one of the things that I did um, kind of early on living in France is I made sure that I had measuring utensils that were in cups and tablespoons and not just in like grams and ounces. So I do actually have both. So for example, this one actually has US cups, UK cups and grams. And then oops, my measuring spoons have tablespoons and uh, milliliters so that I can kind of work with whatever a recipe says. Because when I search for stuff online, unless I'm specifically looking for a recipe from a different country that would be in that like language, I just look for recipes in English and I'm kind of 50-50. So that's why I have both. Got that, and like even with using a full cup of this stuff, like I still have a ton left which is great. I can usually get like two or three batches of gochujang and two or three batches of kimchi out of one of these bags. So it works out pretty well. So I've got my spring onions, which I have no idea why they wrap them like this, but oh well. And I've got my daikon. I'm, I hope this is a daikon. Uh, either way, if I can't find specific ingredients, so for example, daikon radish is not always the easiest to find, I will just use whatever radish they have, and I'm actually gonna do all of this, even though maybe it's too much. I don't really care. I like a lot of radish in my kimchi, so. And I think that I wanna do them in half circles rather than matchsticks. The recipe calls for matchsticks, and I did that the last time, but I think I actually wanna do half circles, just cause. So I'll just do his little circles, actually. Hmm, nice. Oh dear. So I'm just dumping the radish on top of my cabbage and because it'll all get mixed up all at once.
So, oh, basically I have the mass part of the kimchi, so like all the big vegetables. This is going to become a sauce. This is going to get mixed in there, and then I've got that paste that I'm waiting on to finish cooling. So I will be back again. For you guys, it'll be no time at all, but for me, it'll probably be at least 30 minutes or an hour for that to actually cool down. Okay, so I cleaned up all of my dishes while I was waiting, and it is time. So I have to put, oh my gosh, this in here. All right, well, let's see how this works. So. Oops. So. And. All right. There we go. Just kind of a ruby puree. Okay, so next up, and I don't actually know if I'm supposed to do it like all the way, like the most pureed possible, but I do it kind of chunky. I actually keep, I bought these a long time ago and I kind of ration them out for when I make kimchi. I don't use two, but this way I can use my hands when I'm putting everything in the jars and it really does just kind of make it a little easier. Gosh, this is one of those days where I'm just gonna be doing dishes until I go to bed, it feels. But the nice thing is, once it's done, I will have kimchi for the next like month or so. Hopefully a little bit longer. Actually, I don't remember when I last made kimchi. I think it must have been the summer. I don't know. So now we're gonna dump in. is looking pretty good. So then we have to add in all of this <laughs> somehow. So we're gonna kind of do the radish first. Get that mixed in. Oh dear, and I have to empty out more water from my cabbage because it's been sitting for another, I don't know, like another hour while I waited for that mixture to cool down. Problem is the strainer that I have is very small and so it definitely will not all fit in here so we're gonna kind of do it in batches. Alright, so this is where I like to have my gloves. Oh no, and this is why I have my tea towel underneath. Because I cannot be trusted to not make a mess. Up. And you can see why I only do one head of cabbage because like that is basically the maximum capacity for any of my bowls. And uh, so that's what we make. Biggest mess ever. So I know from experience that I can't fit all of it in one jar. And so what I do is I divvy it more or less evenly between two. So we have to smush it all down. And this is where having the glove comes in handy. I mean, I for sure get kimchi on my other hand as well, but it's at least a little bit easier when I'm packing it into the jars than if I were trying to do it with my bare hands. This bowl is uh, listing to one side. I feel like my radish was much bigger this time, and so I actually have more kimchi than I did last time, which I'm not mad about. It gets eaten. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to wipe down my jars before I do anything else. 
So I'm going to do my absolute best to fit everything in both of these. I'd rather not have a third jar if I can at all help it. So uh, my camera ran out of space, so I was unable to finish filming the end of stuffing, but I ended up with, oh my gosh, two very, very full jars of kimchi. I don't know if you guys can see like how full those are. I'm hoping this will be okay. My last ones were not quite this full, so we will see. So what I'm gonna do is I actually have, I don't use paper towels, I have this box of rags. So we are going to clean up the jars a little bit. I don't wanna use something that I'm then going to like use in the kitchen. I want it to go directly in the wash just because I don't wanna accidentally get like pepper on my eyes or dye everything in my kitchen red. So we're gonna just kinda clean up like so. And then what I do is I leave mine out on the counter for about two days. Um, I do, because I use Fido jars, I do check on them and make sure to burp them just so they don't accidentally like explode or anything. Um, it's worked so well so far, but again, I've never made a batch this big, so we will see. And I think what I'm gonna do is just do like that. Let's do a little wipe on the side. So here is jar number one. And clean up, that's good. So this one's actually a little bit cleaner. So that is jar number two. And the nice thing is that these rags will just go directly in the wash so they won't get on everything any more than they already have. So now I have my two jars of kimchi and I will just leave them on my counter for the next two days. Um, usually what I end up doing is I put an alarm or something on my calendar and it just reminds me to check on them and to put them in the fridge after day two. And basically it just kind of helps them start fermenting a little bit more. Um, it probably doesn't help a ton just because it is winter and so my apartment's not super hot, but I feel like it does kind of help kickstart that fermenting process. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I've never, they are packed in full. I've never actually had jars this full before just I think that my radish was bigger because typically I don't find daikon radishes and so I just use ones that are about this big and it was like that big so um, I think that has accounted for more space but what's really nice is I now have I use liter phyto jars so I have two liters of kimchi where when I buy it it's like six or seven bucks for 500 grams and this I would say you know, I did have to buy the goju, um, the goju jaru, and I had to buy like a couple of other things. But overall, the the it's vegetables basically, and so it's actually not super expensive. And given that I have two liters out of it, like it's definitely worth it for me to make my own. Um, I know exactly what's going in there. I make sure everything is safe for me. I, I have more for the money and all of that. So yeah, hopefully this was kind of interesting, kind of random. Um, I honestly did not even plan to film today. I don't know if you guys can tell. I didn't put on any makeup on. Like it was not a normal filming day. I literally came back from the store and I was like, I've been meaning to make some cooking content. Just like, might be kind of fun. So this is gonna serve as kind of like, not exactly a daily vlog, but just sort of a vlog slash like cooking thing because I know that I've gotten some comments over the past like year or two whenever I post stuff on Instagram about like, oh, like what recipe do I use? Or, um, you know, how do I do stuff gluten-free or whatever? And so I thought it might be kind of fun to do a video for you guys. So as I mentioned, um, I do make some adaptations to things, but this is the cookbook that I have been using for kimchi. This is my second time making this particular one. And I will say the other recipe that I use, I'm not even gonna link because it really was not that good. Um, it basically used like a brine base, whereas this, you basically, like you can see, this is all like solid. It will become a little bit more liquid over time. Um, but this is much more similar to what I get when I buy kimchi in the store. And again, not having grown up making it or having somebody in the family who made it, like I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of winging it. But I will say that in terms of taste, based on what I've tasted of kimchi that I can buy here and based on this, like this is a thousand times better than the other recipe that I use. So definitely check out Ming Chi, like she's definitely worth it. And I would definitely recommend a cut 
um, a cut cabbage kimchi if you are looking to start because I feel it's much more manageable for a beginner. Just I feel like there's a certain technique when you have to like do the full head of cabbage and all of that and I found that this has worked out really well. You know the first time it came out super super well it lasted I think I honestly made it like two or three months ago. It lasted it didn't get overly like bitter or weird or anything like that like it's it maintained good flavor throughout so yeah. I'm super excited for this new batch of kimchi. So that is all I have. This will probably end up going up as a Thursday video and I'm gonna try and cut it down a bunch in editing so it's not super, super long. But I will say this process from start to finish probably took almost four hours and that is with like starting to work on stuff and letting the cabbage sit for two hours and then realizing that I forgot to make that other thing that I had to cool down and like waiting for another hour and doing this. So like if I actually get it kind of done and like get my time worked out, it actually doesn't take that long. I would say in terms of like active time, maybe an hour. Um, so it's really not that bad. It's just you have to gauge like which step you need to have done in order to do um, the next step. Otherwise it will definitely take kind of a long stretch of time just because you're gonna have to wait on stuff. Anyway, so that is today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you're interested in other cooking content. I do still wanna do a batch cooking video, um, but that one's gonna be a bit more ambitious just because that's like cooking for an entire week and it'll end up being a bit longer. But if you have other things you'd like to see that, I don't know, that I talk about and you're curious how I make it, let me know. I would actually be really uh, into making some more cooking content because it is something that I do a lot. So yeah. So I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, so if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and are actually watching my end screen and you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would. There's a little button right there for you to do it. And if you're interested in watching some more of my videos, I have links to two of my older videos off to the left there, so you can check those out if you would like to, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!